In lesson 11.2, we talked about the areas of parallelograms and triangles. And we found that the area of a parallelogram is just the base times the height, or similar to a rectangle, just the length times the width, essentially. And the area of the triangle is going to be one half of its base times the height, or would be half of the area of a parallelogram. And you can think of a triangle as a parallelogram cut into two pieces. And that's how we get one half of the base times height. So let's take a look at a couple problems involving areas of triangles and parallelograms. In the first problem, we have a rhombus with the diagonals of 10 and 24. And you can see one of the properties of a rhombus is that the diagonals bisect each other. So we have a series of four different triangles. And in fact, they're all the same or congruent. Uh, also, we know that these are right triangles. So we know that 5 is going to be the height of this top tri triangle, and it's also going to be the height of this bottom triangle. And we can figure out the area of the entire rhombus by taking these two triangles, here and here, and then here and here, and adding them all together. Because we have the base, the base is 24, and the height is 5 for this triangle. So since the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height, we have 1 half of 24, which is the base, times 5, which is the height. And that is equal to 60. And that gives us the top portion. And then we do the same thing on the bottom portion. We have two different triangles. They're acting as one. And we add them together. We have one half, again, of base times height, or one half of 24 times 5, which, again, is equal to 60. So we find that the area of our parallelogram is 120 units squared. The next problem is a little bit trickier, because on the surface it seems as though it would be very difficult to find the height of this parallelogram. In reality, we can find it pretty easily. And you should note that whenever you see a 30 degree angle, you're probably going to use the fact that there is a special relationship between the sides of a 30, 60, 90 triangle in order to solve the problem. So simply, what we do is we just draw an altitude from one side of the parallelogram to the other. And when we draw an altitude, we create a right angle. So we know that this side is 30 degrees. This side is 90, this angle is 90. And then this angle here is going to be 60. So here we have the hypotenuse, which is equal to 5. And we know that the side opposite the 30 degree angle is going to be half the hypotenuse, or 2.5. Now one of the other things that the book gives to us is that the length of one of the sides of the parallelogram is 20. So now we have essentially one of the bases, which is 20, times the height, which is 2 and a half. And that leaves us with an area of 50 units squared. In the last problem, We have a parallelogram, and uh, the book gives us three bits of information. The perimeter of the parallelogram is 154 units. The altitude of the height um, of this dimension of the parallelogram is 10. And the altitude or height of this dimension of the parallelogram is 12. So we approach this problem first by identifying the variables. We know it's a parallelogram. Opposite sides are congruent. So we'll label these opposite sides x and we'll label these opposite sides y. Now we have one piece of information. The perimeter is 154. So we can say that 2x plus 2y is equal to 154. And so I'm just going to write that down on another page. We have 2x plus 2y is equal to 154. Now if we divide both sides by 2, we have x plus y is equal to 77. And if we solve for y, we have y is equal to 77 minus x. 
So I'm going to go back into this problem and I'm going to take out the y's and I'm going to replace them with a value for y uh, that we just developed which is 77 minus x. So now we have a single variable and we also have another two equations. We know that the area is the same for this parallelogram and we also know that the area of the parallelogram is the base times the height. And we have, in this case, two bases and two heights. We have this base and this height, and we have this base and this height. So we have enough information to set these two equations up and then solve for x. So we have 12 times x is equal to 10 times 77 minus x. So let's go to the next page and solve for x. So I have 12 times x is equal to x times 77 minus x. I'm sorry, that's 10 times 77 minus x. Which leaves us with 12x is equal to 770 minus 10x or 22x is equal to 770. And if we divide both sides by 22, we come to the conclusion that x is equal to 35 units. Now the book is asking us to solve for the area. So if x is equal to 35 units, we can figure out that 12 times 35 is equal to 420 units squared. And that's our answer.